Hello everybody and in this video I'm going to show you what in the hell resin welding is. So resin welding as some people put it is a means of filling in gaps and seams in your model using the same photopolymer resin that you use to print your model. Now with larger gaps obviously you may have to use some type of putty or some type of filler aside from the resin but I'm going to show you a couple of good ways to use the photopolymer resin in order to help with your gaps in your seams. So also if you have holes and large gaps in your models, you might want to check out the second part of this video because that might pertain to you. So first and foremost, make sure you are wearing gloves because you do not want to get this on your hands. Secondly, all I do is I just pour a little bit of this into the cap that I'm going to use doesn't take a lot depending on the area that you're going to be working on. Next you want to get you a decent brush. I like to use a very long line brush such as this one here. It's an old brush but it does have straight lines none of its frayed or anything like that because basically what you're going to be doing is you're going to be doing the same thing as a welder. You're basically going to be running a bead on a line and it's got to look good and it's got to look straight so basically what you're going to be doing is you're going to do it in pretty much two parts you're going to find the gap and you're going to lay the line down into the gap such as that to pretty much seal it you can see the clear the open space is actually disappearing and then you want to cure that with your light only takes just a few seconds and then you're going to run a bead now you're going to get probably a little bit of a goop on the end of your brush and you're going to lay it down don't jab at it but just lay it down very gently and then you'll get a bead sort of like that. Don't try to do it all at one time. Cure a part of it and then move to the next section. So once again, you're going to lay that line down, seal it first. Cure it. Okay, and then you're going to lay the bead down. Just like that. Now you will have a bead, just like a weld. You will have a hump, like that. And then you're just going to cure it. And once it's cured, you can touch it. You can do whatever you want to it. And then, of course, you're probably going to have to sand that down a little bit. But, just like that, it is sealed. And you have welded those two pieces together. They're not going to come apart. So I'll show you a third time on this whole entire bead right here. Now, this is real time. This is not sped up. So I'm going to put my line down, seal it. And what I'm doing here is my light is right here. I do not want to flash it in your faces. Okay. Okay, that is sealed. And then I'm going to go through. And notice how I'm holding my brush. I'm not holding it straight up. I'm holding it kind of long ways. And I'm just gently laying this into that and building that bead up just like that. Very, very simple process, and then it's cured. So when you're done, you'll have a scene, you'll have all that closed up, and you can sand that down. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's sanded. And this is what it looks like once you put the first sanding to it. You can sand more if you want. Now this right here you can actually take if you need to put a little spot putty on there 
real thin. It doesn't have to be thick, real thin, and just re-sand it and take all that out. Now what you'll see here is I just have a lot of layer lines into my print and a lot of the primer is going to cover that seam up. So if you have large gaps that the resin will not completely fill, then if you have some PLA, you can use that to put inside the gaps, break off pieces, fill that, and then use your resin. Uh, and then if you need to use any of your Bondo or filler, or wood filler, or anything like that, you can choose to do that. Now what I may do on this is I may take just a little light uh, amount of spot putty and just put on that, let it dry, sand it, and get it really smooth. But for ridges and stuff like this, where I welded this up here, I will actually go through and just take my Dremel or my G-Tool and just sand that down a little bit and that will suffice. And you won't see any seam or gap there whatsoever. Now let's say you have a piece that basically has a hole in it like this. Um, sometimes it happens or a wide gap. What I'm going to show you here is, I don't know what to call it other than a resin band-aid. Uh, but I've been using this uh, for a little bit and it works pretty good with these large gaps and the holes like that that you want to try and save. So basically what I am going to do is I am going to uh, run this past my uh, UV curing light and the surface of it is going to for form a film that I will take off of there and uh, use it to patch up an area. So I run the light past it pretty quickly. I don't I don't run it just uh, <laughs> very slowly because it will solidify the whole entire cap full. But, essence, but in essence, I'm just going to uh, run it by really quickly, such as this. And that's all it takes. Just a wave. And here's what the result is. So now that I have waved my light over my top here, I will reach in here and there is a thin layer like this that you can use to put on your model. Now again, you can use whatever container to put this in that you want. See, I just lay it over. Just lay it over like that. Again, this is not going to be like perfect but it'll allow you to close up a hole or a major gap. And this is pretty technical to, to really learn and take some practice. And then once you're uh, such as that, once you have that on there, then you can cure it once you have it to where you want it. And see that hole I'm filling up now. And I'll take and just cure it with the light. And so now once it's cured, you can sand it down, add more resin to it, filler, whichever you want to do, but that hole is filled. So let's walk through this one more time. You're basically going to have a container, the cap or whichever you're going to have your resin in. You're going to take your light. I like to use this big light like this. I'm getting, I'm not going to flash it in your face. Always wear protective eyewear when you're doing this, when you're handling this light, because uh, you will see yellow spots. And all I'm gonna do is just wave it over this like this. And this quick, this is real time. And that is all I'm gonna do. And in here, you will see that there is a thin layer sitting on the top. And like that, it is cured, it is solid, your hold is filled. Again, this is a very unconventional method of doing this. It's just something I could pass on to you guys I've been working on for a little while. And you could sand that down with a Dremel or with sandpaper, and then you could patch it up accordingly. But at least that fills your hole. Um, and if you have it to where you could get the, uh, the thin layer out uh, evenly, then uh, it'll actually uh, settle on there a lot better uh, but me trying to hold a camera and doing this at the same time is pretty hard. <laughs>
All right, guys, I know that was right, like right out of left field for you. And some of you may try it, some of you may not, but these are some of the things that I've been working on with my models, and I'm happy to pass along some information. It isn't perfect, but it's a means of uh, finding ways to peel up gaps and seams and uh, making our prints a little bit better and a little bit easier to work on. Now, by all means, if you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments section below. I'll be happy to try some of your suggestions. And if you like what you saw and you like me taking chances like that and just exploring options and everything like that, by all means, hit that like button for me and consider subscribing to the channel. Really good content coming up. I'm definitely doing some things to uh, rock the boat a little bit and think outside the box in order to uh, make all of our hobby a little bit better, a little bit easier, and a little bit more efficient in uh, helping develop these models and painting them. So I appreciate the support. Also, make sure that you hit that notification bell. You don't want to miss out on any upcoming videos. You never can tell what I'm going to try next. But that's being creative, and that's being the creative collector. So until next time, until next video, everybody, see ya.